Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Win City Podcast. If you clicked on this video, you're already a winner. I don't know why I'm doing my radio voice, um, but we're back with another edition. It's Eric and I. Eric's a little under the weather. Are you going to be able to power through for the next oh, 40? Are you? Yeah? You got a, a, just a massive bet on the line as we're currently um, recording this. Harrison Barnes needs to get to 10 points. He's at eight points, and they're in overtime. Known to be a chucker of the basketball, so hopefully he scores for you. You could maybe you could periodically give us updates on if that hits. I will do. Okay, we don't have to talk about how many units you're putting on it, but <laughs> I would assume it's a decent amount. Okay, we got a lot to talk about before we get into that. I just want to let everyone know if you're new to the channel, to the show, we do this once a week, every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. There are chapters on the bottom of the screen where you can click to different topics you want to talk about. We're going to get into all the games and the absolute chaos that happened this past weekend we're going to get to Raider talk at the end I know some of you just skip for that and that's okay that's okay first thing we need to discuss is these two games we're going to go in the order of I guess we'll just stick to the order of the games played so we need to talk about what the hell that NFC championship was I'm going to let you take the reins on that (laughs) I feel like the only thing to really talk about are two things. One, the Brock Purdy injury, and two, the future of the 49ers quarterback. Yeah, you know what's so funny is all the way up until this game, Brock Purdy was the unquestioned, without a doubt, lock starter for next season. 100%. And football, I always say, is the best reality TV show on planet Earth. In one play, everything can change. Don't. Don't. I just got to update a couple hours before we started recording this that he's out for six months. Okay, now that's, so, that's so he'll be ready for horrible. training camp. My initial thought was he probably needs like Tommy John or something, and that's like a minimum a year, like something like that. And he'll come back throwing ninety nine though. <laughs> but something like that, you're not playing next year, and then. Whoever steps in next year and they do just as well, he's done. You know what I mean? But six months, that's right in time for, for regular season. It's preseason. Yeah, I, I think I think he's still the starter. And we'll get into, like, the actual game. We'll stick to the Brock Purdy thing for now. He – the 49 – I've never, ever seen a team have to deal with quarterback injuries the way the 49ers do. And you would call it bad luck, but is it is it at some point – the position that Kyle Shanahan is putting these guys in with these like bootleg naked to Hassan right. Reddick and the yep. tight end is blocking Hassan Reddick and he just destroys Brock Purdy. I mean, yep. this season alone, Trey Lance double ankle surgery, Jimmy Garoppolo broke something, I forget what it was. Then Brock Purdy comes in, he's lighting it up, then he gets hurt. Then Josh Johnson gets hurt in right. the same game. same game. Christian McCaffrey attempted a pass. I've never seen a running back reading the playbook while the 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 team assistant is is hacking his helmet to get his oh, yep, to get the yep. headset in. Not that was, was awesome to see though. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was like, just put McCaffrey back there and let him wing it. Um, I here's the thing with Brock Purdy. I think he's done enough. If the question is, has he done enough to get a chance to start next year? I think he has. I don't know if he goes into camp as the unquestioned, without a doubt, starter. I don't know if there's an open competition between him and Trey Lance. Maybe Shanahan there, there, says there that. Probably will be. Yeah. Especially after an injury, like, you can't go in and be like, all right, he's our starter, and then the injury could be delayed, he doesn't look good, and then you're going to switch all of a sudden. So it, it will be a Q- QB competition definitely going into camp. But I feel like he has done enough, proved himself to be a starter for the 49ers next season. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I do think he's gonna. Shanahan will say out loud, "It is a quarterback competition." I although I don't know if that's necessarily true. Like there are yeah. some that yeah. are like, you know, they're rigged for the guy to win, obviously. But the first one that I could think of is like when Tyrod Taylor and Baker Mayfield were in a quarterback competition, then they just gave it to Tyrod Taylor, and mm-hmm. then obviously, like, why, why would you play Baker at that point? Um, yeah, I think he's done enough. I feel terrible for the 49er fans, and that's coming from a Raider fan. Like that's. That like when you play a game and you like we can get into the game now. Uh, they didn't have a chance from the sixth play of the game. It was the game was over, yeah, and the Eagles and didn't even the Eagles didn't even play that well. The 49ers defense kept them alive, big time. That, that's Hur- scary how good their defense was. It was yeah. seven seven at one point. 
Johnson, it was 7-7, seven, seven and Josh Johnson seven, was driving seven. before he dropped yep. the snap. Yeah, yep. Insane, insane. Um, it's, yeah. It's crazy how, like, I, like, they, like you said, they were driving. They look good. Like, the defense looked fantastic. And the Eagles, realistically, shouldn't even score that seven, t- the first touchdown of the game. Yeah, that was a big mess. Like, so I didn't know this, but the people that uh, that are in the booth that are calling down to tell Shanahan the challenge, they don't have, like, a special feed. They're just watching the broadcast, which is why – Burkhart, the announcer for Fox, said, like, listen, we didn't know we had that angle until way after, which is why we didn't show it, because we only saw it, like, 10 minutes later, there was an angle where he dropped the football. Right, and, the, and Smith knew he dropped it because he got up. And he, he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. which like is like... On. He's like this, yeah. Yeah, which, you know, I don't know if you could blame... It's, that's tough. That's tough, that's yeah. A game, that's a game changer right there, from the injury to and that touchdown. Well, I mean... Like, if if you believe in the whole butterfly effect thing, you, Brock Purdy maybe doesn't even get injured if they don't score that touchdown. Yep, yep. And you could also say, like, once you know your quarterback is hurt, like you can't throw the ball. It's just mental chaos and from every offensive and defensive player from start to finish of the game. And you could see it. It was like they were just like bad penalties, like face masks for no reason. Like really, like come on, or like. Trent Williams like just RKO'd somebody at the end of the game. Right. Yeah. You should just see. But I think the 49ers win that game if Purdy doesn't get hurt. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's just impossible to say. I mean, the one thing you do give the, give the Eagles credit for, and this is, a th- this is a thing, they knocked Purdy out of the game. They weren't trying to purposely injure him, but if you're that physical with someone and he gets hurt, like, that's a, that's, that's a thing that you did. And maybe Purdy would have been pressured the whole game. And he wouldn't have been able to right, to be right. effective, but Jalen Hurts was clearly not a hundred percent. Um, he wasn't very good, and then maybe that was because they were they were containing him. For, he had negative like three yards at the end of the first half rushing, and he could he couldn't connect on any deep balls except Rose. the Devonte one, which was a drop and incomplete. And Devonte went to go get it like Odell Beckham. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I I I. Listen, as someone who wanted the 49ers to win this game, it sucks. Like, like ultimately, but instead of me wanting the 49ers to win, I just wanted to see a good game. And it's not even the fact that, like, even when Josh Johnson was in the game and McCaffrey scored that touchdown, I was like, it's like empty cat. Like, what are we doing? This is, I've never seen anything like that. It's unfortunate that that whole season for that team went down to Brock Purdy having to get freaking Tommy John. But uh, Something. Yeah. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on them bringing Purdy back out after Johnson got hurt? Like at that point, I forgot. I'd rather that. see like Debo back there, McCaffrey back there. Like clearly, Purdy couldn't throw the ball, and it was handoff down twenty-one, handoff, 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 handoff. I'd rather see put Debo back there, do some trickery. I don't know. That 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 made me so mad because I'm like, if he can't throw the ball and you're just running the ball. Have someone else out there. They just gave up. And to me, they were like, "Oh, we gave up." Well, it, it's so funny when McCaffrey was back there and he threw that one pass. I was like, "Oh my god, someone's got to be wide open." And then the ball landed, and there was nobody within a hundred yards of the ball. Yeah, but um, I, I don't. I just think like, I think they asked McCaffrey like, "Do you know like the the, the pl- please?" He probably said no. The cadence, right. like, can you hike this ball? I don't know. It was just. Well, go simple then. Do, like, very simple cadence. Like, you're telling me he doesn't know? I don't He's disagree like, with your point, but ultimately I don't I just don't think it matters. Well, so they gave up. I mean, they were down 21-7, to 7 and they were putting eight defensive linemen in the game because they knew they were going to run the ball. I, I just I, – I don't think they gave up, but I think that there was, there was a sense of, up. like uh, – They gave up. Yeah, they probably – I mean, it's hard not to when you're in that situation. It sucks. Like, what are the chances your four? He was a fourth string, fourth string quarterback gets <laughs> playing time and then gets hurt within the same. It was like a, a quarter and a half later. The chances for any other football team are low, but for the 49ers, for some reason, I don't know if it's the play calling or whatever. Yeah, I guess so. They just can't keep their quarterbacks on the field. It's getting it's getting crazy. What do you do then? Four inju- four injuries in I, one I, year. I, that's t- I don't know. I don't know. And to me, personally, I'm happy they lost because just say they won the game, some weird miracle, they wouldn't have a quarterback for the Super Bowl and the game would have been crap. 
it would have been a bad game. That's not necessarily true. You're telling me they would have been healthy enough to play? There were reports that there is an outside chance that Jimmy Garoppolo could have been ready for the Super Bowl. Yeah, but... but and, that, and, and could you imagine the story that would have been? But who's to say that he would have made it to the Rihanna concert at halftime? He probably gets hurt before that. Right. He could have um, watched the concert. Didn't McPherson, was it McPherson who just, like, didn't go to the locker room at halftime and just watched, like, the halftime show last year? I don't remember. I think that was the story. Well, the Bengals, well, he's not going to, he'll be watching from his couch. Because if we get to the next game, which, I mean, this is just, okay, okay. There's a couple things I want to talk about in this game. We're going to, let's, let's stick to the game first, and then we'll branch off. Chiefs beat the Bengals. It's that was an amazing game. It, it 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 had a very weird vibe to it, where it felt like, to me anyway, even more so than last year. I never once thought that the Bengals were going to win. But they it, almost won. Like they almost won like six times. Like it, it felt like, it, even though even though the game was tied, it felt like they were down like ten points for some weird reason. You know what I mean? They like had that feeling like. They're playing from behind, but it's a tie game. Like it's yeah, and and game. then and then like they would force the Chiefs to go three and out, and I'd be like, "How did that just happen?" Like, yeah, it it it, it felt like it. Each time the odds increased for the Bengals to win, I thought, "There's no way they're gonna win this game." They're gonna win. Yeah. I don't know I why like I felt too. like that because it, it just felt like the Chiefs dom. Like, here's what I say about Patrick Mahomes. That. That was an all-time performance. I can't deny that. He's hopping around yeah. on one leg. He's th- yeah. That jump pass that he had to Valdez Scanling, I don't know if there's any quarterback in the league that can make that pass. He he played out of his mind yesterday with, like, her ankle, three receivers were hurt. Yeah. Like, I don't even know who was her number one. Exactly. There was, a fourth, there was a fourth down where he threw a touchdown. It was just, like. He, it was he just standing. Like you gotta give him credit, no matter, no matter what. At this point, like, it, he, to, he feels like Steph Curry. Where if Curry hits a couple threes, you're like, it's it's, it's done. Yeah, He's right, just gonna right. shoot from half court. It's just gonna go in. What are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. Uh, Burrow. You know he had, he threw two picks. The first one was a bad pick. The second one, I don't really blame. He was just trying to make the play. Uh, but 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 he also like, I leave this game having. So much more respect, not only for for Mahomes, but also Burrow, because the guy just gets back up, and he like yeah. w- he like picks his team up like this and and wills them down the field. They didn't he, have much of a running game. It was just it. I don't know. It was just a yeah, weird I think they game. They had like forty yards rushing total. Yeah, I don't know. It he, was just yeah. He always finds a way to like, even though he didn't win, but like they're right there. They're always in the mix, like. He just his his leadership is is probably the best in the league. I will say the one time where I thought maybe the Bengals are going to win this thing is when he completed that fourth down, fourth and six to Jamar Sixth, Chase, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that got me out of my seat. I was like, oh my god, this guy's so different. He's just a yeah. different breed, and I think that the reason people are having like hard like a hard time accepting just how good he is is because when you watch it, it's so run of the mill, it's so average. But then you look up, and they go. They got the ball with two minutes left in, against Kansas City, and they can go kick a field goal and win this game. Yeah, they, they. I feel like if they had their rushing game a little bit more, they they win the game. Like I just felt like the Chiefs were just playing. They knew the pass was coming like every single play. It was like the opposite of what the Eagles won against. It was like they knew the run was coming. Now the Chiefs were, Chiefs knew the pass was coming. Like mixing. Like what do you? He probably had like twelve hundred rushing yards. Was he over? He was probably a thousand yard rusher this year. I think so. Yeah. And he had I think like fourteen yards in the game. AFC Championship yeah. game you have fourteen yards. That's yeah, a, that's it, a dagger. It's a dagger. And Burrow got sacked four times in his first nine dropbacks. It wasn't yep. that like a crazy. Yeah, that. But again, like I, I just like we know how good Andy Reid is, and it looks like Zach Taylor is a competent play caller, and. Their offensive line last year, the Bengals, was bad. And this year, it wasn't bad. It was just they had three guys out. So it was kind of the same situation as last year, and it could have gone either way. We didn't get the new overtime rules, which sucks. But I just leave that game going. Mahomes is Mahomes is one of a kind, and Burrow is not far off. And I was watching the game thinking, like, you know, people made the point, like, 
is Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes the next Tom Brady and Peyton Manning? 100%. I think, 100%. Well, no, no, I said Josh Allen. I think, I think that it, it's it's not Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. It's Joe Burrow and Patrick. Well, yeah, yeah, that hundred percent to that. Yeah, I, it, that watching those two just it it. It's it's amazing how outstanding they are. It's, it's literally they're in their own tiers, like Mahomes, Burrow, Tier One. Then you could do. You could. I'm gonna skip a tier, and then there's everyone else. It's yeah, like, exactly. Tier one, exactly. them. Tier two, nobody, and then tier three. What is it? What does he say in Moneyball? He's like, "There's the Yankees, like, yeah, then yeah. there's a hundred feet of shit, and yeah, then there's us." There's fifty feet of crap, and then there's us. That's yeah. There's Mahomes and Burrow. There's fifty feet of crap, and then there's everyone else. Exactly. Um, yeah, I and, and you know what the best thing about that is? There's still Joe Burrow is still young enough to where we don't even know who is Brady and who is Manning, because when you say Brady and Manning, okay, Brady's way obviously he's better. But Manning also has played in three Super Bowls. Okay, yeah. this is going to be Mahomes' third. Is he going to win it? We'll get to that in a second. Um, but the idea that I think it's very exciting to know that there are our next two pillars, and we don't know who is going to end up being better than the other until it's all said and done. I honestly think it's going to be like 50-50. I love that. I hope it is. No, even though the head-to-head three, three and one right now, yeah, the guy still think Mahomes has – the, the notch because well he's been to three Super Bowls now yeah this one. well career wise he's definitely ahead but I, I I don't think it's gonna be like like Brady dominated Manning right even though Manning's like top five quarterback right but I feel like it's gonna be like 50 50 like they're both gonna I feel like Burrow's gonna go to like four Super Bowls five Super Bowls Mahomes is his third already I just feel like they're gonna be so close to compare where you could debate both of them. But, like, can you debate Brady and Manning? Yes, but who, who wins nine out of ten times? Brady. Right. Uh, and you know what's crazy about that is if you think back to, you know, like Joe Montana or Tom Brady or, or you know, uh, Steve, uh, well, I guess my point would be the one time in the history of the NFL where there wasn't, like, a, like an unquestioned best player in the league – is in the time of, like, Favre and Steve Young and Troy Aikman, where, like, Favre, I guess, was the best. Yeah. But could you imagine having two quarterbacks the level of, well, not Tom Brady, but the level of Peyton Manning to where we could look at them and just throw our hands up? No idea who's better. That's exciting. Right now, I would say, I think I said this last week, Mahomes is more like greedy. Because, like, yeah. the dynasty that the Chiefs have right now, like, three Super Bowls in four years, five straight AFC championships, like, just going to the Super Bowl, like, just say Mahomes is all in three in Super Bowls, like, just say he didn't win, just getting to the Super Bowl is impressive enough, and he's three in the last four, and if he wins this one, he's ready two Super Bowl victories. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't disagree with that. I think the only reason Burrow isn't on the same level statistic-wise is just because he's younger. I think he's going to have the same amount. And... Boy, does it look like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert are going to struggle to get to the championship when they have to beat these two yeah. guys. Um, it's, it's like it's it's literally like oh, like Joe Flacco, he's going to make it once or twice. Philip like Rivers ben, never made it. Big Ben, right, like all the, yeah, yeah. Josh Allen they might become are. the Big Ben, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean that was listen. At least we got at least it was a good game. We needed a good game after what we saw. In the first one, um, we could talk a little bit about the matchup between the two of them. I don't want to pick the game because I think that should be probably next week. Because I can tell you right now, folks, we're not going to be talking about the Pro Bowl games. Um, but Eagles, Chiefs, I'm a reluctant Eagles fan next week. I'm definitely not rooting for the Chiefs, but I don't love the Eagles either. If they could tie, I would root for that. Maybe I'll throw some money on the Eagles to really give me any reason to watch the game other than just because I like football. I'm really only there for Rihanna and the commercials at this point. Um, I don't know. The Eagles are favored by minus two and a half. My gut would tell you to put your money on the Chiefs. Yeah. When the Chiefs are underdogs, I feel like you got to take that. But the Eagles are only favored because they literally walked blindfolded into the Super Bowl. The bye. <laughs> They give up 14 points in, in, to get to the Super Bowl. Seven to the Giants, seven to the Niners. Think about that. They had more chance of losing to the bye week than they did to the 49ers. Pretty much. 
pretty, yeah, 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 pretty much. They could have, like I said, played blindfolded and won still. It's just they their defense is elite right now. But well, that, that, I Jaylen think that's Hurst why they're favored. Right. If Jalen Hurts doesn't step it up, like if he plays the same way he did in the Edge Championship game, they probably will win. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. And here, here is the storyline. Andy Reid having a chance to beat the team that fired him in the Super Bowl. Isn't that iconic? That could – that – does he win – if he wins the Super Bowl, does he walk off into the sunset? Probably not. No. <laughs> no. Is that wishful? Why would you? Where, like, why would you? Because just let somebody else win the division. How about that? He doesn't want that. He wants to win a division each more cheaper. How many Super Bowls, how many AFC championship, no, how many AFC West championships do the Raiders have in the next 10 years? One? At most, <laughs> I was going to give them two, but most likely zero to one. <laughs> it's not even just the Chiefs, right? No, it's just the Chiefs. I, 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 I the, the Chargers are fool's gold, right, and the Broncos the Chargers, suck. They made the playoffs this year. And what happened? They it was an all time choke job. Whoa! I'm just they made it the playoffs. The I don't Raiders, care. They don't care. Do that. They did last year, and that's what I actually want to talk about. It, now that we okay, listen, we're in Raider talk now, and this is just slowly becoming me on the couch, and you're being my therapist. But I was having, I was, you know, I was in the shower, shower thoughts, and um. I was thinking about the year we made the playoffs and thinking about what people were saying about Josh McDaniels and uh, how everyone was like, well, he inherited a playoff team and then they went 6-11. and 11. And then once he goes 6-11, and 11, Mark Davis comes out and says, you know, Rome wasn't built in one day. We got to build. And people were like, Rome wasn't built in one day. You had Rome last year. And what happened? I was thinking about that season where we made the playoffs, the thing with Henry Ruggs and then Gruden got fired. There was a point in – the tenure of Rich Basaccia, where we were six and seven and got destroyed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Then the four games we win at the end of the year, we beat the Bron- sorry, we beat the Browns on a last second field goal. And Nick Mullins was their starting quarterback. Not Sick. Baker Mayfield. And it was on like a Tuesday because of COVID. Ooh, bring that back. Next That's week cool. we beat Denver by one possession, and I'm pretty sure Drew Locke was their quarterback. So two wins we kind of limped into. Then we played the Colts in Indianapolis, right when Carson Wentz was deciding that he didn't want to be a starting quarterback anymore. And that was a walk-off. And then once you get into week 18, and it's at home, and it's winning, you get in, how are you losing that game? Yeah, You're not. So my question to the table was last season's playoff appearance, I've already used this term because it was in my head, was that just fool's gold? Was that team actually not ready to compete with the Chiefs and the Bengals? I don't think so. Okay. Because if you think about this, you just said three, two or three of those wins were walk-offs, right? Mm-hmm. Against this not year, great teams. Right. This year... How many of their losses were one possession games? Out of eleven losses, nine were one possession games. So last year they walked it off. This year they lost. They lost. They they lost on one possession games. So they weren't wins where they're like, oh, we clearly won that game, right? They limped in. They limped. They won barely. This year they lost. They limped on losses, and it was the same thing. But this year was just opposite. Even if you've gone into the playoffs, do you win the first game? This year? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we got into the playoffs, let's pretend we were 9-8. and eight. So that would have been... You would have played who? The Bills? Yeah. And I mean, you, the Dolphins almost gonna, beat them. Agreed, but do you really win in Buffalo? Realistically, no. probably not. Uh, you, you, you are picking them to lose that game. So same thing as last year. They got to figure out to get the notch up one possession games. They got to win those and just get two score leads. They hold the lead. They were, they are heading plenty two, three score leads this year, the Raiders. 
and they just gave it up. If they could control that, they make the playoffs and get 10 wins. Then yeah. that brings them to the next tier team. But right now, between last year and this year, they're right around one possession games, and they're winning, losing them. And that, that's not a playoff team. That's not an elite team. I, I think, uh, ultimately, I do agree with you. I was just kind of posing that to see if maybe maybe we could talk ourselves into believing that that team was a fluke. I do think there were some elements of that that had to do with the situation that they were in, yeah. which they kind of like came together. But I think my point in saying that, and you brought it up perfectly, is like all those games that we won last year that were walk-offs, including like we beat – Dallas in Dallas, last second field goal, and we mm-hmm. walked off the first game of the season against Baltimore. Like those are games that we just didn't win this year, and I do think we probably do win those games if we have Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro. Like they both miss significant Agreed. time. Agreed. Um, and I think my point, my overarching point for this whole segment, is that I think we just need to pump the brakes on all the Josh McDaniel slander. It, 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 it's it's almost impossible for a first-year head coach to make the playoffs, no matter what team he inherits. Yeah. Now, this is probably one of the better teams a coach that's new has inherited. But to be fair to him, Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro, the two people that we were like, you're going to pair them with Devontae Adams? Yeah. Barely played the whole season. It was your key offense, your core offense, didn't even play together. It was like injuries... And Derek, uh, like, listen, Derek also did not play well. But this is the most complicated offense he's had to learn. It's his sixth offense he's had to learn. And he's always better the second year in an offense. Now, he's not going to get that chance. But we're going to have somebody next year who has played in the offense, whether it is Stidham, Garoppolo, or Brady. One of those three will be the starter next year. But watching that game, the Kansas City game, I would not be opposed to drafting a quarterback also. You got yeah. you, you to gotta find somebody because Brady's not your long-term answer, and Jimmy G's not going to make the playoffs consistently with Burrow and Herbert and Mahomes and Lawrence and Allen. That's five spots right there. You're just going to be six or seven for the rest of your – But if you draft a quarterback, where are you going to go from, like, cap space with Waller, with Jacobs, with Adams, with, like, all of that? You're going to you're, you're gonna resign all of them? That you're – <coughs> I think you got to just cross that bridge when you get there. I think you just got to get the guy in the building and hopefully. So, so year by year. Well, I mean, we're gonna get forty million dollars in cap space because Carr is not gonna be on the team, and half of that's probably gonna go to whoever our next quarterback is. And then you could just keep pushing off that other free space. Yeah. Until C.J. Stroud or Will Levis or whoever it is ends up starting. Um. But, yeah, man, I agree with you. I don't think it was fool's goal. I think there were some fluky elements to that. But I just think that this season, as bad as it was for us, um, and it did break me. It broke me because I was excited. Um, I don't think it's all bad. I think there's something that you can take out of it. And, uh, you know. So would you rather have Carr there or, or not? I'm ready to start over. Um I, and I think part of it, to be truthful to you, is I also think he deserves better. I True. think he should just get out of Vegas where there's so much expectation. I don't think he should go to the Jets, which is where I think he's going to end up. I think the Saints would be Probably. perfect for him because the division's going to be such a wash. Um, it's a six-win division. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think that he needs a new opportunity, and if he goes somewhere else and also stinks up the joint, then, hey, well, I don't want him on our team if he's going to play like that, too. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think that's it, buddy. I got You got anything else you want to talk about? I got That's it for me. Um, we'll talk about the Super Bowl. We'll, like, we'll make predictions next week. Yeah, at, that's fine. At some point, I, I want to talk about – I do want to talk about the uh, – like where all these quarterbacks are going to end up. The free agency. Like Lamar, Rodgers, Trey Lance. Oh, there's like, like what are they going to do with these guys? Maybe we'll do that next week, too, because there's probably not going to be that much to talk about. Yeah. Um, hey, guys, if you like if you like what you see, make sure you leave some comments, some uh, likes. And dislikes help, too. Even if you dislike the show, it still helps. Um, you can dislike my comments. Sure, that's totally fine. How about somebody commented last week saying that you're a negative Nancy for the Raiders? No way. They were like, this guy's not a Raider fan. And I'm like, he's not. Uh, no, I'm not a Raider fan, but... You gotta back me up here. I I love Derek Carr. Like I respected him. I thought he was always top ten quarterback. Like 
he deserved a lot more. He deserves more praise than he gets. He I mean, gets a lot of hate for no reason. There was a time where you ranked him higher than I did on our, our annual I, quarterback. I, I, he, he, go, if you gave me a blind resume of Derek Carr maybe like last year, two years ago, his stats were top 10 worthy. Well, and there's always like 15 yeah. or like 16. He was higher than that. I mean, there's a, like this infamous blind resume that's going around of like Derek Carr having better career numbers than uh, Matt Stafford. But, oh, Matt Stafford, that's another one. What's he doing? Anyway. He's toast. We'll, t- <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, we'll talk about all that stuff next week. Leave some comments. Make sure to subscribe. It's free. Um, yeah, man. Uh, oh, God. I had the thing that I said last week. I can't remember. But to end it? You don't remember? Don't remember. Bye. Thank you for new- <laughs> Bye. My bet lost. No. Yeah. Oh. He he didn't take one shot in overtime or the last six minutes of the fourth quarter. So he didn't shoot the ball for like 12 minutes. Harrison that one Barnes. free throw. Yeah, that one free throw, nothing. I might keep that in at the end. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, I lost.